We're migrating a standard edition database, 19C. We're migrating, I think, two. I probably spelt that wrong or typo there. We're migrating to standard edition 19C and planning what hardware we should get in order to give the best processing efficiency per dollar. What would be our best choice for CPU? I suppose the best way I can answer that is it's complicated. And a lot of it depends on what your needs are, but I'll give you a few scenarios and what I would advise and what I've advised in the past customers to do if they're planning on running standard edition two and how to get the best bang for your buck, as we say. When we look at the standard edition two limits, and I've picked a little you know, PC here as being representative of a server, you can have up to two sockets. So you can't go buy a four socket machine or a 10 socket machine. You can't go buy a monster machine. You have, you're limited to two sockets on whatever piece of gear you get. Those two sockets can have as many cores as you want. So you can absolutely stack that machine with the most powerful, you know, massively cored machines, uh, sockets you can choose. That's all well and good, but standard edition two is limited to 16 concurrent threads. So effectively, it's not necessarily just 16 threads at the same time, it's 16 threads worth of work. So you could easily have 100 sessions connected, but at any given point in time, you'll be doing 16 threads worth of concurrent work and that's what SE2 is limited at. So what does that mean in terms of buying hardware? Well, there's lots of scenarios. Your first thought is, you know, unlimited cores, woohoo, let's go buy all the cores. Let's go get, if we're limited to two sockets, why not go get the two biggest multi-core sockets we can buy? We head over to the Intel or the AMD price list and just pick the number at the top. Let's look at things that you may or may not choose to do. If you are running a dedicated server, running standard edition two, and that's you're just running one database on it. Let's say you're gonna run your production database on that machine, and that's the only thing you're going to run. If you go out and buy a two socket machine with say 20 to four cores, which is sort of you know pretty much the number of cores you can get now, you can get, I think even a bit higher now, but that's pretty close to the maximum number of cores you can get you know, per chip. I wouldn't recommend that because it's gonna cost you more. Those cores are gonna cost you more, but you're never going to be able to use them. Because if you're just running that one database on there, it's going to be limited to 16 threads, period. A, lot, a whole lot of those cores are simply going to go unutilized. You've effectively wasted the money. Cores, you know, CPUs aren't ridiculously expensive, but the reality is you may as well try to get the best bang for your buck. Conversely, and this is why I said we're going to talk about some scenarios. If you're planning on running multiple databases on that machine, so you may have one installation of standard edition, but you may have a two or three production databases. Well, in that case, maybe it is worthwhile getting those extra cores. You're still limited to 16 threads, but what you're going to have is the overhead on the machine. You're not going to be running the machine anywhere near close to capacity. It's going to have plenty of spare cores. It's not, it's not like it's going to pick 16 of the cores and not use eight. It'll do 16 cores worth of 16 threads worth of work spread across all those cores. So if you are going to have a lot of different kinds of workload, whether it's multiple databases or multiple other kinds of workload, then yeah, you may as well, if you're limited to two sockets, you may as well crank those sockets up as powerful as you can. But as I said, this is a decision making process for you as a customer. If you value things like power, price, and the ability to expand your machine over things like high availability, and let's face it, if you're running standard edition two, you're not using things like automatic data guard, you're not using things like rack, etc. So maybe high availability isn't high on your agenda, no pun intended. So if it is for you, it's all about power, price and expansion. You could, for example, just go for a one socket machine, which has 24 cores. You still get your 16 threads worth of performance there, but you now have the ability to put a second socket in that machine over time if the need arises. Conversely, if you value high availability over price, power, expansion ability, then having one CPU in a box is a fundamental single point of failure. You know, something goes wrong with that CPU and you are dead in the water until you can move the entire operation somewhere else or go buy a new CPU. That's obviously possibly a lot of downtime. So if you value the availability of your system over things like power price, the ability to expand it, you may as well buy a machine that has the two sockets in it already. And then you might choose to have a lower number of cores. Now, why would I choose a lower number of cores? Because generally the top end speed for a CPU is better for a lower number of cores. Generally machines uh, work the compromise between multi-core performance and single core performance. So generally if you get less cores, you might be able to run those machines a little bit faster. 
The other thing here is to understand the usage model for the Oracle database. People think, oh, I'll go get a GPU or I'll go get a machine with you know, all sorts of trendy CPU components. The reality is, I remember there used to be a company called Simulus, uh, Julian Dyke, famous guy in the UK Oracle scene, uh, used to work, I think, for year many years ago for a company called Simulus, where they dug into what the Oracle database did at its, at its lowest level. And it turned out that something like 80% of everything an Oracle database does is either memory access or integer arithmetic, because we don't use a lot of the floating point stuff in the Oracle database. Uh, we do some of the you know, on CPU instructions for in memory, but for standard edition two, you're pretty much looking at integer arithmetic and memory access. So what you want is CPU and memory that does that best. That normally means high megahertz or high gigahertz on your CPU and very, very fast RAM. So 16 threads means faster cores is probably better than more cores. If you have a 16 core machine, it might top out at say five gigahertz. If you have a 32 core machine, it might top out at say four gigahertz. You get a lot more cores, but if you can only run 16 threads anyway, you may as well get the fastest cores you can. Similarly, the definition of fast is not necessarily just the gigahertz speed. Look at things like the L1, L2, level, level 3 cache, because as we said, Oracle is all about memory access and picking up stuff on cache lines. Things like mutexes and latches will sit nicely on those fast caches. And obviously, fast, the definition of fast here is fast memory. Get the fastest memory you can for that machine, or get the motherboard that supports the fastest memory, you know, DDR5, etc. If you do that, you'll be able to get a stonking amount of workload even through standard edition. And obviously, fast means you'll notice in the standard edition version, we don't say, oh, you can have 16 threads and 512 gigs of RAM. Have as much RAM as you want. So get, pick a system that supports very, very high amounts of RAM, but be aware you'll always be trading off. Generally, the bigger amount of RAM you have, sometimes you don't get the maximum speed of that memory, but you can work that balance. Now, I will say one thing. If you aren't running Standard Edition 2, I would encourage you to look at this document. There's the link, oracle.com, assets, PAS, IS, universal credits. It's a description of all the licensing facilities when it comes to running servers on cloud. It's a big document, but if you hunt down to page 115 last time I looked, so yeah, it's tucked away on page 115. There's this little paragraph about if you're running standard edition or standard edition two, then there's this. For each supported processor license, so if you've got a two socket box on standard edition two, you can migrate that machine to a cloud autonomous database and get four OCPUs for each socket. What that means is for the same price you're currently paying for standard edition two on premises, you could move that workload to autonomous and effectively the cost you will pay is the same. And for that, you get eight OCPUs on autonomous. That blows my mind. It, this bothers me as an Oracle employee because I don't like the fact that we're giving you such a good deal because you know, ultimately that, that might hurt my salary. For the same price, you're moving from standard edition features to enterprise edition because autonomous pretty much is all the enterprise edition features. And if you go to apexoracle.com slash database features, if you do the line between standard edition two and enterprise edition, see like the solitary tick there for standard edition. If I keep scrolling through, Look at that first column. So much stuff is not on standard edition two that is on enterprise edition slash autonomous, like literally so many features. Plus, if you're an autonomous, we're going to back it up for you. We're going to patch it for you. We're going to monitor it for you. We're going to upgrade it for you. All that stuff that you had to do yourself on standard edition two goes out the window. Classic example. Last in May in 2020, when I first got myself an autonomous database, I logged onto it. It was 19.3. I've done very little bit of that database. I pretty much log on to it every once in a while through demos and stuff. I've done nothing in terms of the management of us, but literally last month logged on, it's on 19.17. Someone, not me, thankfully, has applied 14 release updates to that database. It's a no brainer if you're on standard edition two and you're a company that can relocate services to cloud to get eight OCPUs for the same price and pick up all the enterprise edition features, plus REST, plus ORDS, plus APEX, et cetera, et cetera, and have the whole thing managed for you, blows my mind. If you can do it, if your company supports moving to cloud, for me, it's just an absolute no-brainer.